diseases are running rampant out in the world and I can't find time to borrow my baby's things and there's so many baby bottle sterilizers out in the world. Do they even work? Don't worry, we've got you. Welcome to To The Test, where we put things to the test. Today, we hover behind baby bottle sterilizers to ask, are they really doing their jobs? There are three main types of baby bottle sterilizers currently available in the market. UV, steam, and cold water tablets. Representing the UV light camp, we've got the Coral UV2 Sanitizer Plus Dryer, which shines UVC rays from their UV lamp to kill bacteria by destroying their molecular bonds. You can throw your items in, including things like washed baby bottles and even your phone. Hit the button, you're good to go. On steam is the Philips Avon Sterilizer, where the steam kills bacteria in 10 minutes. Essentially, this works like boiling, since it puts the items in a 100 degrees Celsius environment, except there are no pots involved, and it's hands-free. They recommend you wash your baby bottles, put them in, and press the button. 40 minutes later, it's both sterilized and dry. Finally, on cold water is Milton's cold water sterilizing tablets. How do they work? The tablets contain an active ingredient of trochlosin sodium, which slowly and relatively steadily releases low concentrations of chlorine when in contact with water. The instructions say to drop one tablet into 5 litres of water, have the washed things swim for 15 minutes and out they come. No need for rinsing. And all of these claim to be able to kill at least 99.9% .9 of germs. 99.9% .9, you say? Sounds like... They should prove it. Where's Ray? Love's this way. We're here at NUS's Department of Microbiology and Immunology and Dr. Chung, what are we doing here? We are interested today to look at how our different sterilizers work in terms of killing viruses and bacteria. And so we're going to run a couple of experiments to check out how effective these things are and whether or not they perform as uh, they are marketed to. We're just going to take our baby bottle kits and uh, we're going to take some bacteria and viruses that we've already pre-grown and add that on to these teats. I've got a special set of six teats where I've actually grown the bacteria together with the teats overnight so that way the bacteria have more time to attach to the surface, form something called a biofilm. They should be a little bit tougher in this biofilm state and uh, we'll find out if they're able to survive these sterilization processes. Our three products will be compared against two control groups, washing with soap. This is a uh, soap solution with uh, five milliliters of mama lemon and uh, 250 milliliters of water. And boiling for 10 minutes. Usually when we do boiling at home, we just throw the teeth into the boiling water, but then we cannot do it over here like that. It's because then we'll contaminate the boiling water and also then we will lose track of where the teeth are and so on. Then we'll get them all confused. We're back after two days and we've got some results. This roll is to test for viruses and this row is a test for bacteria. So the clearer it is for bacteria, the better it has performed and the cloudier it is for a virus, the better it has performed. So the methods that we are starting off uh, here that have been very effective are the tablet, the steam sterilizer, as well as boiling. So what do we have here? Let me explain a little bit what the different columns are. Uh, the first, the topmost column, uh, refer to the uh, undiluted sample and so you can see a lot of growth there. Uh, the next row, is the sample when it's been diluted tenfold, the row after that when the sample has been diluted 100 times. So you can see the countable number of colonies in this third row, and if we sum that up, we can estimate the amount of bacteria present on this uh, teat. So if we uh, directly took our contaminated teats and exposed them to UV, you can still see that there's some bacteria growing. So if you look at this first plate on, on my left, uh, you can see what the original uh, conditions look like. So the UV treatment has drastically reduced the uh, amount of bacteria on these teats, but not completely remove them. And not at the same level as the other three we looked at earlier. Oh, not, not even close. What about this last thing over here, which is very clean? Well, that is what happens when you follow the instructions on the packaging. So the thing that uh, we've been instructed to do is to first wash this bottle to get rid of the bulk of the bacteria. And then if we use the UV method, it will completely eliminate the remnant bacteria on that teat. But if you just take that first step and wash it with soap and water, how far does that get you? 
um, quite far actually. Even with the undiluted sample, you can actually count the number of colonies, suggesting that you've removed over 99.9% .9 of the bacteria just by using standard detergent and water. So just soap and water is actually more effective than just the UV sterilizer. Correct. But when it comes to viruses, uh, it seems we have a slightly different story. The virus has been inactivated by ultraviolet sterilization, as well as by washing with soap and water. So the UV machine on its own was able to kill virus, this particular virus. That's what it looks like. So now we're going to talk a little bit about biofilm. So this simulates uh, what happens if you leave a contaminated bottle overnight. Instead of washing them, you just left them at the side. As a control, uh, teeth that has not been contaminated, there's no bacteria growing in this tube. And if we have sterilization methods that are completely effective, no matter how long you leave the tube there for, the solutions all remain clear. Now, if you've got a sterilization method that's incomplete, you find that even if there's a single bacteria, uh, after enough time, it will grow up sufficiently to make the entire tube cloudy. There's certainly uh, all manner of pathogens that exist in the world. It really is only a, a tiny fraction of all the bacteria and all the microbes that exist that can actually cause problems for us. So the uh, fact of the matter is that microbes are very much a part of our lives. They're all around us and it's actually only in the most artificial of environments where we don't find bacteria and viruses and other microbes growing. To get rid of the ones that could be harmful to us, is washing our hands with soap and water enough? For an average person, that's probably more than enough. So these devices do work as intended. But as someone who believes in the eat dirt, grow up dirty philosophy, I'm wondering if you really need to get rid of every last trace of bacteria. There have been more data come out called the hygiene hypothesis, which actually states that if the environment is excessively clean, the child actually is predisposed to what we call the type 2 reactions, for which they can actually have more allergic manifestations that can happen with the COVID, widespread use of masks, as well as the reduction of actually viral diseases between children. We may be seeing a predisposition towards this phenomenon, but more data needs to be collected before we can be certain. But definitely, it is a difficult question that nobody knows how clean is too clean. I think the first and foremost thing is to actually keep these things well clean and washed with soap and warm water. Since soap and water, if it's properly done, and if you were to heat up the milk in that sense to the right temperature, then actually the amount of bacteria load for the most ordinary person is actually sufficient. However, if the child is premature or less than two to three months of age, then a sterilizing process will probably be recommended. The parents can consider actually sterilizing with either the sterilizing tablets or of course with the steam sterilizers or even boiling the bottles. After this has been done, it is important to store these containers in actually clean containers in a cool and dry environment. When they want to use them, which is preferably within about 12 hours, then you will be able to actually use them within that period. But if they have been cleaned or sterilized like two days ago, the bacteria can regrow on these surfaces after they have been exposed in a while. So what we've learned is that washing with soap and water actually gives really good results. But giving the bottles a good boil or using one of these sterilizers does make a difference. But boiling does have its drawbacks because you have to get a whole bunch of water, you have to stand by your stove for 10 minutes, and then you have to wash your pot after. So we find that a good replacement is actually the steam sterilizer because it basically does the same thing except in one convenient machine and it even dries the bottles for you. I also like that it only uses 130 milliliters of water, so cleanup is super easy and you don't end up wasting a lot of water. So, if you find yourself juggling lots of tasks every day while looking after the baby, then using one of these sterilizers could take a load off your shoulders and give you that extra peace of mind. For more detail in your reviews, head down to Ray's article on straightstimes.com. I will read what that is. Practice this before the baby comes. So